Um, the Lord, the last word that the Lord really spoke to me was about his vengeance. And he said that uh, he was avenging his people, and he was releasing the vengeance of the Lord against the enemy. Not that, you know, obviously we don't release vengeance against people. That's the Lord's issue, not right? But I want to read to you this whole portion because this is us. This is where we're at. It says here, now Jesus was telling the disciples a parable to make the point that at all times they ought to pray, here we go, and not give up and lose heart. If you've, if you've given up or lost heart because you've been discouraged because of waiting, don't lose heart. Just repent. Get right back on track again, okay? It says here, uh, in a certain city, there was a judge who did not fear God and had no respect for man. There was a desperate win widow in that city, and she kept coming to him saying, Give me justice and legal protection for my adversary. For a time, he would not, but later he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow continues to bother me, I will give her justice and legal protection. And when you literally look that word up, it means to be beaten black and blue. It says, Otherwise, by continual coming, she'll be intolerable annoyance, and she will wear me out. Then the Lord said, Listen to what this unjust judge says. And will not our just God defend and avenge his elect, his chosen ones who carry out to him day and night? Will he delay in providing justice on their behalf? I tell you that he will defend and avenge them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? See, he, he's, he's there avenging us. He's there. But sometimes, you know, we get so caught up because we're so caught up in just what we're experiencing and not realizing what God is doing behind the scenes. He is avenging us. And then in Isaiah 59, 17, it says, For the Lord put on righteousness like a cloak of armor and salvation like a helmet on his head, and he put on garments of vengeance for clothing and covered himself with zeal and a great love for his people as a cloak. The Lord said, My vengeance is coming to defend my people. And then uh, two scriptures, and we're done. Isaiah 54 in the Amplified says, Say to those with an anxious and panic-stricken heart, Be strong and fear not. Indeed, your God will come with vengeance for the ungodly, and the retribution of God will come, but he will save you. Now remember, he loves the people. I'm talking about the assignment of the enemy against you. Isaiah 34, and I want to read to you out of the Passion. Same scripture. Say to the anxious and fearful, Be strong and never afraid. Look, here comes your God. He's breaking through to give you victory. He's come. He comes to avenge your enemies. With divine retribution, he comes to save you. The blind eyes will open and deaf ears will hear. Then the lame will leap like a playful deer and the tongue tied with sing and will sing songs of triumph. Triumphant gushing waters will spring up in the wilderness and streams will flow in through the desert. And there will be a highway of holiness called the sacred way. The impure will not be permitted on this road, but it will be accessible for God's people. I just love what he's saying. He's come to avenge your enemies. It's, it's not worth striving. It's trusting the Lord. I'm going to ask you to stand. God wants us to know that he's on our side. So he wants us to know that in this year, there's payback. There's recompense. God wants to bring uh, recovery into your life. We're going to pray over people today, and we're going to anoint you for this new year, that as you come into this new year, that, that what we want to do is just break off the old and, and, and just decree the new over your life. Amen? Amen? But I want you to remember that. So in this year, God is saying, get close to me. Yeah. Learn to wait on me. Trust me. Know that I'm here on your side. I've come to avenge you. And when I come back, will I find faith on the earth? Right? He wants payback. You know, and I'm, I, you know, everything that he has in this word about him being El Gibor, that he's mighty champion, he's the prince of peace. You know, that's the, these are gifts that he has for us to operate in. And he wants us so much to, to experience victory. You know, for those of us that are parents, don't you want to see your kids do well? Don't you want to see them be blessed and pro That's what he's, he's not like, you know what, they mess up, then I'm going to slap them over the head and forget them. That's not what he does. When we sin, when we open up the door, that allows the enemy to come in and harass us. But, but God is merciful. 
He's there. He's, he doesn't want that any should perish. He wants to, to bring forgiveness into your life. And he wants to bring healing and restoration. So if you're beating yourself up, stop. Don't do that. <clears throat> if, you're, if you've been passive, repent. If you've been complacent or because you've been disappointed and discouraged, remember when I quoted Isaiah uh, 60, arise from the prostration, the disappointment, the discouragement in which the enemy has kept you. Rise to a new light. Let the light of God shine over you. See, we all have choices here. Either we're going we're gonna to be a navel steerer or we're going to bless the Lord and keep our eyes fixed on him. That's a choice. That's a choice we all have. And, we all, and God lets us have our own choices. So I just want to pray. And then I'm going to invite you all up. And what I, we have oil. I only have found one. I usually have about 22 bottles in my purse. But um, calling I cleaned all it oil. out. What's that? It said calling all oil. Yeah. Well, Anybody we're going to just anoint. And listen, this is a point of contact. It's just faith. And so, but um, I want to do that. But I wanted, I know Lisa had a word. I know. Um, David, I just wanted you to release whatever word that the Lord had given you. You know, we're entering into a new season. We all hear God. And so, do you have a word too? Yeah. Okay. But can we come up first? Yeah. Because I want to do a prophetic act as we're leaving 2022. The text verse that Trisha used is Jeremiah 33, 3. And as we were sitting here tonight, I felt like the Lord wanted us to say goodbye to 2022. <laughs> yeah. So turn around and wave goodbye to 2022. <laughs> goodbye, 2022. Yeah. <laughs> but let, let's just think about this for a minute because it's been 33 months. 33 months since March of 2020. It's about to be three years since COVID started, right? And uh, man, like say goodbye to that whole mess too. Goodbye to that way of thinking, to the bad habits that we developed, to the to the being closed off to other people, other Christians, and the heartache that so many people had to face of, of not being able to see loved ones in the hospital. And I was talking to a guy this week, both his parents died within two days of each other. He didn't get to see either one of them. I mean, horrible, horrible things. I'm saying goodbye to that mess, to that whole that whole confusion and that whole mess. And, and Lord, we just say welcome. We welcome you in. And as we cross over, we're crossing over into a season of victory and renewal and a restart and a fresh start. So as we anoint people tonight, receive that fresh start. Just, just put your foot down and say, I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead and I'm moving forward in the Lord for the great things that he has in store for me in this year. And that's what this verse says. Call unto me and I will answer you and tell you and even show you great and mighty things, things which have not been confined and hidden, which you do not know and understand, but you will. I speak that as a word for you over 2023, that you are going to see things that the Lord shows you in a new way, in a fresh way. And Lord, we're going to take your instructions as we move forward. In Jesus' name.